Hey everybody, good to see you all again. With this video I thought I'd take a bit of a different approach and go through my collection in a more specific way. Uh, we've all seen and owned, uh, well maybe not owned, but we've all at least seen some more interesting vinyls out there, more unique ones that you don't always see in everyday places. And I thought I'd like to go through my collection and show off some of mine and maybe get to see some of yours in the process. So. I'll go through these in a way where I examine the uh, uniqueness of either the vinyl itself or the vinyl and its packaging altogether if it's something that I think is really noteworthy as a whole package instead of just the unique record itself. So this first one here is a perfect example of what I mean by more unique packaging uh, vinyl combination. So for Record Store Day, uh, Fat Boys, the uh, uh, famous 80s rap group put out a re-release of their self-titled album and in order to celebrate the record store day occasion they put out the album in a literal cardboard pizza box style it, it is literally a mini pizza box which is already a very cool concept but even going beyond that when we open up the pizza box we get not only a nice booklet, but we get a picture disc of an actual pizza, <laughs> which I just think was a damn cool idea. <laughs> you could tell that they clearly put a lot of work and labor of love into this one. And, uh, you know, unlike most picture discs out there, which uh, can tend to give you a lot of surface noise issues, uh, this one was mostly pretty silent for the most part. Um, for those who don't know the group, if you're a fan of uh, old school rap in the style of Run DMC, uh, this is pretty much an essential listen. Re really, really fun stuff and a, a nice, uh, really nice way to put the package together. I admit, I uh, way back when I had not actually heard of the group and then I saw uh, what were images of this set. It made me curious, and then I checked them out, and I realized that that was an old-school group that I had been missing out on. It was a really nice, uh, well-put-together labor of love there for the group. Now, this next one may be a little more well-known, uh, just because the, the group itself is obviously very famous, but I do think it's worth uh, showing off what the vinyl itself looks like, even if the sound may not be the best release ever. Uh, for those who remember the band Tool, this is Lateralis. No, Lateralis. Jeez. It's one of those things that's easier to read than it is to say out loud. And taking a look at both of these, what you get are actually two picture discs to represent the whole album. And although you can't really tell by looking at each one directly, the, the way it looks while it spins is actually really unique and psychedelic in a way. Uh, unfortunately, uh, like most picture discs of its type, there are surface noise issues with it. And as far as I'm aware, this is still the only way to own the album on vinyl at this point. It's, uh, you know, it's still cool, and I still love the way that it looked, at least, even if uh, it wasn't the best sounding version out there. Maybe we'll see a real straight-up black vinyl release in the future, or at least some colored one that won't give us as much surface noise. This next one proves that it is all in the presentation. We have got the Ocarina of Time soundtrack that was put out by im8bit.com. Now as you can already see, this is actual golden embossing on the cover here, along with a golden embossed Triforce on the back. But wait, there's more! <laughs> Pulling out the sleeve here with the little Triforce edge. You see that it actually reveals this picture in itself. Each one of these being a sleeve holding the record itself. And the record itself is also worth noting because not only is it cool to look at, but they also put a very uh, unique approach on side one and side two. The first side here has one piece of heart. The second side has two pieces. <laughs> And then side three, on a record that has a very cool, interesting swirly effect, and then the fourth piece of heart to finish it all off. It's more than just uh, interesting looking. Just the fact that uh, a soundtrack for this game even exists on final is kind of a very surprising, interesting thing. 
Uh, now, I am 8-Bit, the company that puts these out. Um, definitely works more on presentation than putting together a miraculous sound, I will say. But uh, I, I do feel that you definitely get what you pay for when when you get their releases. They put out an amazing one for Cuphead that I'd love to get someday. That one looks like it hasn't been tampered with any uh, weird pictures or colors or anything. It just looks more like a straight-up vinyl release. But eh, it's not the cheapest thing out there, so it might take a little while. These next two are also very unique. While uh, they are not video game music, the, the band themselves bases music off a specific game, and that band is the Proto Men. This here is the first release for Act 1, which is part of a uh, apparently three-part story, though who knows if and when we'll ever see the third part. This is a very neat little split vinyl, and unlike the CD version, it's actually got just a little bit of extra material, uh, not really music-wise, but uh, sound-wise and story-wise. The first pressing of this was also very uh, unique because on top of including the album in a booklet, they also had a stencil, which is not something that I see get included with records very often. Uh, don't know if I've ever seen anyone actually use this on uh, any posters or jackets or anything, but I'd be curious to see that if so. They're a really unique band and very, very fun to see at shows if you ever get the chance. They're very, very lively, and uh, they seem to just be getting more and more popular, even for people who don't really care about Mega Man that much. So after going through that one, we are now up to Act 2. Now, unlike the first one, this is a very thick release, as you can see. Uh, there we go. That this one's filled in more like an actual book. The records themselves are put in these two outer sleeves here in the openings. Now on top of having the lyrics and everything on here, you also get little notes written from the main characters themselves. I believe these were supposed to be all uh, Dr. Light writing to his love, Emily, which was a very interesting approach. But uh, most interesting of all inside of this, and uh, this is going to be a little hard to focus uh, on the camera with, but I'm going to try anyway, just because... This is too cool to pass up. You literally get the games, the, the games, the, the story city in a big pop-up book fashion. It is literally a giant pop-up book. It is so cool looking that I, I just can't get over the fact that they would put something together that way. And again, on top of being so huge, it's actually filled with content, not only just the lyrics uh, and these, again, these little notes themselves, but also little narrations and things in between, stuff that expands the, the story material. You, you could tell that they really went all out with this, which is good because it took a very, very long time to, uh, to come out. I, I'm trying to remember how many years ago that the album even came out on CD that we're only just getting to a vinyl release now. So hopefully we'll see Act 3 sometime this century with that said. What made this next one interesting to me is more the fact that the original soundtrack to this has not actually been available for a good number of years. I have not uh, gotten to listen to this one on my turntable yet, so I can't speak for the sound. But this one is the original Power Rangers soundtrack, <laughs> back from the 90s with music by Ron Wasserman. They went through the trouble of getting all of the colors of the Rangers on this one. It's uh, one of the more interesting splatter vinyls that I've seen in a while. You can see it's actually got red, pink, yellow, blue, and a little black on there. No green, though. Not sure what they have against Tommy. <laughs> but, uh, it, yeah, you could absolutely tell. Once again, this is another release from I Am 8-Bit, and you can see the presentation is, is definitely there. Um, being that part of the vinyl is clear, uh, I do have a little bit of worry there. Some clear vinyls that I've listened to in the past have had some issues, not only with surface noise, but also a little bit of skipping. I don't know if that's a superstitious thing on my part, but uh, I'm going to be careful when I put that one in. Now these last two for this video are definitely some of the most unique ones that I think I've ever seen, whether in person or online or anywhere else. Uh, now you've probably heard of the company Mondo. They make a lot of... Um, unique movie posters 
and vinyl records and uh, enamel pins and all kinds of other things. Uh, the, these two releases both happen to come from them, and in a way they sort of go together and don't. Uh, I'll show you what I mean. So the first here was for Superman, the animated series. It happened to have the uh, the main theme song and end credits songs as well as the Batman Superman Adventures theme on the second side. Now I hesitate to to move this one. It is so strangely shaped that you actually have to be very very delicate with it. Uh, I have almost no faith at all in my ability to to keep, keep this thing in here and take proper care of it. This is gonna sound nuts, but this is an actual record <laughs> that you're looking at here. This is a 45 RPM record. That is in the shape of the logo itself. Again, while it barely plays much, it is definitely one of the strangest and most unique types of vinyl I've ever had or had to handle. It's, uh, like I said, I'm nervous even holding it right now just because it's so strange in its setup. There were also interesting variants to that one as well. Uh, there's one that was designed like the Bizarro logo with it in the reverse with the changed colors. They had some cool variant ideas with that. And of course, you can't have Superman without also talking about Batman! Yes. Batman as well had the animated series vinyl treatment. Now, this is another one that uh, pretty much rips apart at the seams in this sleeve no matter what I do with it. If you thought that the Superman logo one was pointy and difficult to handle, wait until you see this one. <laughs> yeah. Get ready for this. This is legitimately the shape of the bat logo. It's very, very hard to hold up here. There were, I believe, two versions of this one, uh, one being the plain black one, and then there was the other with this, uh, with this sort of uh, whitish-gray splatter effect thrown on here. And this was, uh, both of these were actually done for the uh, for the anniversaries of these characters. I believe they were both 75th anniversary releases. Oh, yeah, there's a 75 on that, so that's how you can tell. Um, but yeah, again, looking at it closely, believe it or not, there is actual, you can see there's actual music on there. It's not just for show, even though it's, I, I admit this is mostly for show, and I, I like showing it off. <laughs> it's just cool. I've been tempted to hang it up sometimes before I don't know if I want to though it's just it's so pretty it's so pretty it is so hard to keep this thing in a record sleeve though and I, I admit I <laughs> I don't know how much longer it's gonna last I may have to get a new protective one or something just because it's that strange and you know Batman-y and we'll stop it there for now but I'm sure I've got plenty more that I can cook up I've just got to look through my collection more, even remind myself of some of the strange and interesting things I've come across over the years. But yeah, in the meantime, those are mine. Let me, show me yours. What, what do you have? Let me know in the comments below. And uh, hey, maybe even if you've got some unique ideas for some, let me know those as well. I'd love to hear what you think would make the ultimate vinyl package for something. And uh, thanks again as always. Have a good one.